So last time, we talked about wrestlers who have won not one, but two of a company's top prizes. And as promised, today it's time to go over those occasions when a single wrestler has won two different titles from two different promotions. Because today... Thank you so much for the support over on Patreon, Rick Rack. Let's start by reminding everybody of the rules for this list. First, this is my own personal opinion, and I'm only picking 7 wrestlers, and there are way more than 7 wrestlers to accomplish this feat, but I'm just choosing my own favorite 7. And also, I am only counting wrestlers who have won 2 singles championships at the same time, so holding a world title and a tag strap simultaneously won't count on its own for me. And now, with all that being said, let's get into the list. John Moxley Starting off with New Japan, here's a wrestler who is currently rocking double hardware, at least as of this recording. And that wrestler is John Moxley. Not only is he All Elite Wrestling's World Champion, which he won by defeating Chris Jericho, but he is also the IWGP United States Heavyweight Champion too, which he is in the midst of his second reign after beating Lance Archer at Wrestle Kingdom. Now, I would also like to point out that the former Dean Ambrose is the only wrestler, again, as of this recording, who has held both the WWE United States Championship as well as the New Japan United States Championship. Cody Rhodes. Going back to All In, the show that would serve as the precursor to All Elite Wrestling, we would get to witness the historic moment when Cody Rhodes would win the title that his father held, the 10 pounds of gold, the NWA World Championship. Following this, Cody's good news would keep on coming, with Cody then managing to defeat Juice Robinson for New Japan's United States Championship at the show called Fighting Spirit Unleashed less than a month later on September 30th, 2018. Although Cody's reign as dual champion wouldn't last too long, as he would lose the NWE title right back to Nick Aldis on October 21st, and then, yet again, losing the United States Championship right back to the wrestler he got it from, as Juice Robinson would reclaim the title at Wrestle Kingdom 13. Tatsumi Fujinami Staying with New Japan and the NWA, former IWGP champion Tatsumi Fujinami celebrated his third reign with the belt in March of 1991 at the Big Fight series defeating Big Van Vader. Later on in that exact same month, Fujinami would also get to defeat the Nature Boy Ric Flair at the special event Starcade in Tokyo Dome to become the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Now, largely, this NWA reign was ignored outside of Japan and covered up through clever wording, as a series of events were portrayed differently depending on which country you were in. In Japan, Fujinami simply won the NWA world title straight up. However, in America, Flair was said to have retained the WCW world title due to Fujinami illegally throwing Flair over the top rope. But that right there is the catch. As is still the case even today, some confuse exactly when WCW and the NWA became two separate entities. And by slyly interchanging those three letters around, WCW was able to hide Flair's loss to American audiences. Before they eventually just went ahead and retconned the whole thing altogether. The cover-up concluded at the first ever Super Brawl, with the main event featuring Ric Flair and Tatsumi Fujinami in an epic rematch, which was still showcased as a champion versus champion match. And when Flair won, Japan was just led to believe that Flair had just regained the NWA world title, while American fans were under the impression that Flair's win was just a successful title defense. However, retroactively, WWE has begun giving Tatsumi Fujinami the recognition that he deserves, fully recognizing his reign with the NWA NWA world title, making him the first ever to hold both the NWA and IWGP titles simultaneously, thus officially and all across the globe acknowledging Tatsumi Fujinami as the double champion that he always was. Chris Jericho Okay, so this one is a bit of an obvious one. Going back to WWF Vengeance on December 9th, 2001, Chris Jericho made history as he was the first person to ever win both the WWF and WCW World Championships, combining them into being the undisputed world title. And he also managed to beat Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock in the same night in order to do so. Now, while this was also a unification, Jericho did sport two separate title belts during his reign, never even getting to wear the official undisputed strap. But even with that being so, the act of having won both the WWF and WCW World Championships on separate occasions was something of a rare accomplishment, and Jericho managed to do both at once, so of course there's a place for him on this list. However, I will say that this reign does lose some of its start since it was after WWF had already bought WCW, and Jericho's run with it really wasn't booked to be as grand as it should have been, which are the only reasons that for me at least, it doesn't rank higher. Rob Van Dam 
Up next, we have Rob Van Dam. At ECW's second one night stand in 2006, we got to see one of my favorite moments in all of wrestling history. And yes, I know that pay per view title name really doesn't work the second time around. Anyway, RVD was always one of the biggest stars that the original ECW ever had, and unfortunately, he lost his television championship due to injury after an amazingly long run. But during that time, he did elevate the TV title to being more than anyone ever thought possible. Some would even say that it was bigger than the ECW world title itself during Rob Van Dam's reign. But either way, upon his return from the DL, RVD was thought to be a shoo-in for the world title. But alas, ECW closed its doors before that could ever happen. Happen. And to make matters worse, this wouldn't be the last disappointment for Van Dam. As in 2005, for the first one night stand, RVD was injured yet again and could not take part in this amazing event. However, the following year would make up for all of it. After winning money in the bank, Rob Van Dam stated well in advance that he would be cashing in at one night stand 2006 for the WWE Championship. And he would be going against none other than John Cena, the anti Paul Heyman guy if ever there was one. And after defeating the Doctor of Thugonomics, RVD VD and Paul E would usher in the return of the ECW world title to go along with Rob Van Dam's WWE Championship. Now yes, this was after ECW was already bought by Vince McMahon. So why does this rank higher than Jericho's reign? Well, it's because it wasn't a title merger. And also because I just like ECW better and you know what? It's my show. Kurt Angle. Following RVD is the only person to be featured on both lists. Your Olympic gold medal hero, Kurt Angle. Angle. Now strap in because this is going to be a bumpy ride down memory lane, as Kurt was on a total non-stop acquisition of all the gold that TNA had to offer, starting off as the first official TNA champion when the company created their own title. Kurt was then briefly stripped of this championship before winning it right back at Slammiversary in 2007. From there, Angle would enter a match teaming with then X Division champion Samoa Joe as they went against then TNA tag champions, the Dudley Boys. Now the stipulations of this bout were a bit unusual, as every time title was up for grabs. The rule was, whoever pins you gets your title. And when Samoa Joe pinned Bubba Ray, he won the Tag Team Championship all by himself. This led to a match against Kurt Angle in a winner-take-all bout, and the Olympic gold medalist won and captured the TNA Tag and the X Division Championships all for his very own and added that to his already won TNA World title. But okay, while that is a lot of hardware, it's all TNA gold, and isn't this video supposed to be about interpromotional double champions? So how does Kurt Angle fit into this equation? Well, the reason why Kurt is here is because there is yet another piece of gold that he held at the time, which leads to just one more complicated situation. New Japan's founding father Antonio Noki would eventually get into some issues with the promotion that he founded, and from there he would leave New Japan to yet again form his own company, but this time it would be called the Inoki Genome Federation. And the IGF's first champion, Brock Lesnar, would eventually lose his title which was also called the IWGP Championship, and I covered why that is in another video already, to Kurt Angle in June of 2007, right after Kurt had already regained the TNA World Championship, thus making Angle a double, double champion and TNA's second Triple Crown champion while also being the second third version of the IWGP Heavyweight Championships champion. Yeah, I think that's right. Oh, and in a bonus note, Angle would drop his Anoki Genome Federation IWGP title to New Japan's IWGP Heavyweight Champion, Shinsuke Nakamura, who merged both titles into one. The J Crown. And finally, if you thought five title belts was a big deal, well, you ain't seen nothing yet. Because here we have the J Crown. Now, I've already covered this too in another video, but it really is one of my favorite things in all of wrestling. For those of you who are uninitiated, the J Crown was not one, not two, but eight lighter weight championships all grouped together, defended, and contested as one title. But if that still wasn't enough for you, don't worry because we still have more gold to go with a particular J Crown winner the Ultimo Dragon. In addition to the Octo title, Otomo made his reign even more unique as he would win another two more titles on top of the J-Crown, thus bringing his grand total to a record-setting 10 concurrent championships. And what was really cool about all this was that these 10 titles all came from different promotions, such as New Japan, the NWA, the CMLL, WCW, and even WWF, although Vince McMahon really didn't know about it at the time. The point is, if there was ever an interpromotional double champion or octuple champion or decktuple champion, it would have to be the Ultimo Dragon. You could just think of them as five double champions all in one. 
Well, there you go, Alyssa 7 Interpromotional Double Champions. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up as well as subscribing right here to Dave Knows Wrestling. And if you want to give me some help during these trying times, please go over to my Patreon page and give some support just like these fine folks over here. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, Dave Knows.